to counseling and psychological services for a variety of reasons, but the top presenting concerns we see in students tend to be depression first, followed by anxiety, and then academic concerns. But we also see students for lots of other reasons. Students might be experiencing grief and loss, trouble with relationships, either intimate relationships or their families. Uh, some students might have some concerns about attention or ADHD, or just some general normative identity concerns that are really common for the college age population. We see anything from adjustment issues, such as transition to campus life. Um, it could be relational conflicts with a roommate, um, a romantic breakup, all the way to um, someone that's having suicidal thoughts or um, eating disorders. So most college students will experience depression or anxiety at some point during their time in college. At most times in our lives we experience some form of depression, anxiety, or mental health concern. In fact, there's statistics that suggest that at some point during our lives, up to 40% of us will experience some type of concern, so it's really common. And some common symptoms of depression might be uh, something just like feeling, feeling sad more often, having more difficulty focusing or concentrating on schoolwork, uh, trouble attending class on time. Some more serious signs of depression can be if you notice changes in your appetite or your sleep, either suffering from insomnia or sleeping too much. Uh, some other signs of depression can be simply just losing interest in activities you normally found fun and enjoyable. And then the more serious signs of depression can be if you're starting to have thoughts of suicide or hurting yourself. And those are the signs when we really want to be sure students are coming in and speaking with a professional. You know, whenever you're trying to approach someone that you feel like could use some more support through counseling or just in general needs to talk to someone, I think it's a really good idea to be very specific about your observations that you've been having. And so an example would be, you know, something like, you know, I've noticed that you have not been coming out of your room as much, or um, whenever we invite you to dinner, you say no, and I've been worried about you lately. Um, can you tell me what's going on? Just something really simple like that and just keep it very open-ended and to really listen and obviously you want to be very sensitive and non-judgmental. I think that a lot of times people get nervous when they're interacting with someone they're concerned about and they might actually jump to something like oh well just cheer up or let's go for a run you'll feel better after that and it's important to just sort of be with them and not try to make judgment too quick. If in listening to them, they're starting to express behaviors or feelings that are concerning to you, then it's important to start talking with them about the different services and supports available on campus. It can be really helpful if they are receptive to it. Um, just to say something like, you know, it could be helpful for you to see a professional about it and just go to counseling. And if you have had experience going to counseling, to say, you know, I've been there and they've been really helpful. And if you want, I can even walk you there or we can make the phone call together right now. Help and support is available. And the one option could be encouraging them to call the counseling office. So counseling and psychological services, it's very easy to get in and speak with somebody. You simply call our number and schedule an appointment to speak with a counselor. But you can definitely help save a life just by asking and helping them get connected to resources.